Good evening. Um, today the process would complete just over 60 boxes, perhaps 60 or 61, which would be the largest number of boxes concluded in a day. So that is showing that the pace is gradually increasing, but not to a satisfactory level. Therefore, we continue to anxiously await the establishment of the additional promised stations, which we hope will bring greater expediency to the process. And also, we would like that we would like to see the hours of work specified in the order be rigidly enforced and complied with because today again ballot uh, containers were closed at 5 30 and we believe that that is unacceptable it's a premature closure of work and having regard to the fact that we are developing a backlog, so to speak, when one takes into account the average of the output daily and the 25 days deadline. We are still at a backlog and therefore steps must be taken to bring greater rapidity to the process. Region 4 in particular is agonizingly slow and perhaps that may also be a deliberate strategy. This entire afternoon, Region 4 completed one box, one single box, from lunch to 5.30. And I believe they could have started another box at 5.30 and conclude at 7. So total today, for example, Region 4 did four boxes. Region 5 did 18 boxes. So clearly... And a particular trend is emerging, which we hope um, we will have reversed at some point in time. And the strategy that appears to be emerging of delaying Region 4, uh, we will be able to nip that in the bud soon. The other important aspect of today's work is that Region 1... The tabulation exercise was finally concluded and the certificate which has to be issued at the end of the tabulation of a region's result was signed by all the parties including GCOM officials and that certificate was given to all the parties. That co would constitute a declaration of the Region 1's results. So that was done, and we are happy that we were able to overcome certain hurdles that arose which delayed this process from being completed before. The other issue that I would like to speak briefly on is you heard the President's uh, remarks to the press. Importantly, he spoke about um, elections being free and orderly. He says that he's committed to this recon process and he says that he will be bound by the declaration emanating from the process. Um, I think he said any declaration. I can't imagine that it will be a declaration other than the, the process that he himself initiated because remember, in the CARICOM Accord, he initiated the recon process. And I mean, I don't wish to rehash the whole history of the obstacles that were sprung up, but you know them well, the population can relate to them very vividly. But now that we have reached this stage, I consider the President's remarks um, good in the context of binding himself to the results of the process and accepting the results of the process. One would hope that his other members of his government will now adjust their narrative to suit 
the parameters fixed by the president and you will have less and less of the side shows and freak shows and pantomime that we have been having unless of course the president has given one of his placatory sterile commitment and narrative we are hoping that is not in position here and that we will see now that the president has spoken um, an alteration of the narrative that will come from ministers of his government and members of his party um, of course you saw the very harsh language that the president used to reprimand the attorney general who essentially told you yesterday that this exercise is a time-wasting one and it can produce no legal results I saw the president was very firm in his dismissal of Basil Williams remarks and fittingly so those remarks were outrageous um, so those are the few remarks I would like to make at this stage and um, of course I'll invite your questions Yes, they signed off. I, I looked at it. I saw the, the person's signature. I just verified that they signed off. Can you say who the person is? Um, I can't remember the person's name. Um, I can't, uh, no, I can't remember. I don't want to guess. But the person was, um, he signed off. I looked at it. I went to the room actually because the problem had arisen. And uh, which um, my, my party representatives asked for my intervention. So I was in the room and he was there, the, the whole panel. is not one, it's more than one person. And um, they signed on, and, which is um, a positive development. Um, just before you came out, Mr. Martin from the PMPR um, claimed that 45 of the Region 1 ballot boxes are directly linked to electoral fraud. Um, did you pick up any irregularities, or did the PPP pick up any irregularities during the recon process for District 1? None, no irregularity of any substantive and substantial nature. As we said before, and we will continue to see, every election, once you subject it to some kind of forensic or other examination, or even a recount, will reveal and produce margins of error. That is an acceptable state of affairs across the electoral globe wherever elections are held guyana will be no different so yes you are going to have very minimal diminished marginal differences and you had them in region region one and they're going to recur i suppose throughout the exercise but not of the nature type and magnitude that can alter outcome of the elections so they may have some discrepancies about 20 votes missing or something like that um, that is the extent of it I don't know what Norton is talking about and the fact that his um, his representatives his party's representatives signed on and that that certificate I believe would put those allegations to rest you said that one box for region four token in Arlene and Tamal to time. Um, where was that box from? What were the issues that were being raised? East Bank. The box was from East Bank. Um, in all fairness, it was a fairly large box too. But no box to take that kind of hours, five hours. No, no box. And it's because of the same narrative, the same type of objections continuing. And that's what I'm saying. That you know, you have the president and the head of the coalition out here talking to the nation and committing to the process. And while he's doing that, and even after he has done that, his minions continue on a path that is inconsistent with what Mr. Granger has said. I am hoping that by tomorrow, you know, directions will be given to adjust this narrative so that we can eliminate it because it has as we have been saying all the time it 
does not, it will not materially affect the results, the counting of the ballots. And that is what, what is important. Norton, I, I understand, spoke highly, uh, 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 spoke a lot about the, um, or made a big issue about absence of poll books. Now the poll books, some of the poll books, I am told, were missing at the time when that part of the region was being um, recounted. But the poll books were subsequently recovered. So how is there a miscarriage of justice? How is there an unfairness? And all that is contained in a, a, a poll book is an occurrence register. If anything out of the ordinary occurs, it's a, a place where the presiding officer can make a note. That is all. That is what it is. It's an occurrence book. How can that be elevated to the important status of affecting the results of an election? That's simply ludicrous. But as I said, the strategy is to magnify and maximize these irregularities and to make them appear as they are substantial problems and that they can possibly detract from the numbers that the ballot boxes are revealing one by one. Again today, again today, the ballot, every one of the ballot box, 60 of them, that will be completed by the end of today, all of them match the SOPs that the PVP has in its possession. All of them, in a material way, one after the other. So the process is producing consistently that the ballots in the box match the SOP, and subsequently or consequently, the SORs that are being produced by the process is matching the SOPs and the number of ballots. Mr. Nadal, did the PPP for this March 2nd election illegally pay anyone to vote in the party's favor? Certainly not. We have Aubrey Norton saying that the party is in possession of the signed affidavits from persons claiming that your party paid them to vote in its favor. Can you respond to that? Aubrey Norton is a known political hack. You would have information like that and you're keeping it at Congress Place. This is the kind of insane utterances that they come and they make to the people of this country and they expect people to respect them at the end of the process. Rather than talk about PPP, affidavits from PPP, let him produce the statements of poll that they are claiming they win the elections by. And unless they do that and answer you properly, don't entertain the questions. Okay. That should be a good policy. The they come here and talk foolishness. Right. The AP and UFC is claiming that for Region 1, there were a total of 120 ballots that belonged to the coalition that were found in the PPP pile. Can you attest to... Uh, and that was discovered where? In this process? During the count, the region one count. So, but why did their, why did their um, officer in their tabulation center sign on to the results? You see, the same thing is happening. They're polling agents on elections, they sign on to the statements of poll. Now their officers in the tabulation center are signing on. And you still have a growing commentary outside of that? Well, Mr. Norton has said that they would not sign off on anything. But then we saw a document showing that somebody did sign off on everything. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I keep saying that they can't get their act together. Even that, they're incompetent to do. But does signing on mean that you agree with it? Well, what does it mean, because sir? Can, can you just sign on and also include the observation? There is nothing in the, the certificate has no place for anything else other than the signature and the figures that it contains. And one signs on to a document because one, one accepts it. Now, not because you have not signed on, it means that your, the absence of your signature can affect the validity of the document. That also can't happen because you can't unreasonably refuse to sign and then claim the document is invalid, is that if you have a court matter going on, 
you choose to absent yourself from the court hearings and you expect that the court can proceed the law doesn't function like that the law allows the court to proceed ex parte in your absence meaning that you can one person will never have the power in law who has a partisan interest one person who has a partisan interest will never have the power in law to refuse to sign so as to render the document invalid. The law will never countenance that. Would you say in your view as a lawyer that the effect that the certification of the Region 1 vote has is to replace the declaration for Region 1? Well, that is the whole purpose of the exercise that these declarations one by one will what will prevail in the end and that is what will be totaled by the chief elections officer and placed in a report and present to the commission and that is what the president i understand bind himself to and that is why he rejected what basil williams was saying is your understanding that the old declaration for region one is still held in well, the commission, I think, made that decision, and at the appropriate time, I suppose, the abeyance will be lifted, and it will be destroyed, and, your view is that and it will be overcome and overtaken by the new certificate that the process is producing, okay. region by region. What's going to happen going forward if the coalition refuses to sign that certification document for the other region? What can happen there? Is that going to meet a delay in a declaration? I, it should not. That's what I'm saying. One party who has a partisan interest and who, ha, who and when the outcome is not favoring that party will never have the authority in law to refuse to sign the process because he or she is dissatisfied with the results of the process. The law will never countenance such a morbid and sordid state of affairs. Not of any material type. That's what I'm saying. As I said, you are going to have a margin of errors uh, you, which the process will produce. Any process. Especially an election process. Yesterday, I made reference to a, a Starbuck News editorial. Beautifully written that made that point in a very, very fundamental way about margin of errors being committed at, by elections. But importantly, they will not, either singularly or in an aggregate way, affect the eventual outcome of the elections. If that happens, then you have a, you have a problem. But that is not what is, what, what is being shown here. The, ballot, the ballot, ballots are matching the statements of poll consequently producing a statement of recount that also is matching the statement of poll. Does it concern you that uh, the coalition has, has said that there has been a substantial amount of ballots that were not stamped with a six-digit stamp? Uh, one case cited is that some matter point, and they, they've included the, about 8 to 1% of the ballots from the digital forces. How many ballots were affected? Right, so they're not telling you. When they say 81 percent, it, the box can have maybe 80 votes. But any ballot. And, 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 yes, any ballot, that should not happen. It should not happen. But, as I said, these margin of errors are going to be revealed. But do they aggregate and concatenate to a level that will materially affect the total output? Of, of course, of, look, every single error concerns me. But the PPP can't be burdened. The PPP didn't run these elections. When Miss Myers and Lowenfield and Claudette Singh and Ben and Alexander and Gunrad, they come out here, ask them how that happened. They took a billion of taxpayers' dollars to run an election. They are independent. 
they had exclusive management and conduct of the elections. The PPP can be made a scapegoat for errors committed on elections day. What the PPP will say that an aggregate of those irregularities, whatever they are, will not materially affect the fact that the PPP won these elections by over 15,000 votes. But doesn't that affect the credibility of the elections that you're seeing a thousand My friend, my friend, my friend, this, these elections were observed by the Carter Center, by the Commonwealth Observer Team, by CARICOM Observer Team, by a United Nations Observer Team, a team from the OAS, the Private Sector Observer Team, AMCHAM, the Guyana Bar Association, the Guyana Labor Movement, and a whole host of religious organizations. Every single one of them, cert having observed the elections in an impartial and non-participatory way, and without a vested interest in the outcome of the elections, pronounced in their respective reports and public statements that these elections were free, fair, transparent, and done in accordance with acceptable democratic norms and tradition. So my view, and the PPP view, doesn't really matter. The government themselves proclaimed that they won the election. The president has repeatedly said, up to the 4th of May, in a public statement, I quote, Election Day's activities were free, fair, and orderly. Free, meaning free of violence, I suppose. Fair, meaning devoid of fraud. And orderly, meaning absence of public confusion and public disorder. And that is the, that is the status of the elections. The only thing that went wrong with the elections is when Mingo attempted to steal in Ashmin building and then at High Street Kingston. That is the only wrong committed in, in the electoral process of substance, of public confusion and public disorder. And that is, the, that is the status of the elections. The only thing that went wrong with the elections is when Mingo attempted to steal in Ashmin building and then at High Street Kingston. That is the only wrong committed in, in the electoral process of substance. And there you had it from a PPP executive member, Anil Nandalal, giving us an update about what took place today at the Ardishan Conference Center. Uh, there seems to be some confusion about the certification document for um, District 1. The certification document would have the official results from the recount for District 1 and the tabulation and the recounting of 99 ballot boxes com um, were completed since Friday for District 1 and the results were put onto a certification document and all contesting parties who contested the March 2nd general and regional elections in District 1 had to sign off on that certification document. Now just before Mr. Nandal came out, we would have heard Aubrey Norton from the PNCR stating that they will not sign the certification document because the results for District 1 are not credible. But just as Mr. Norton left the media tent, we received the certification document that was signed by all political parties. And that certification document showed that the APNU AFC signed off on that document, um, which is basically saying that they accept the declaration or the results for the recount for District 1. That, um, that signature was, um, was to Daniel Siram from the APNU AFC. Uh, he signed off on behalf of the coalition on the certification document. So there appears to be some confusion with the APNU AFC as to whether they're going to continue signing the certification document, uh, claiming because they're still claiming that the results are not credible for, for Region 1. Um, Mr. Nandalal also would have debunked some allegations made by Mr. Norton about there being fraud in District 1. And he said for every election, there will be some amount of irregularities. And he's claiming that there was a small margin of errors found, but nothing that would affect the outcome of the elections. Um, 
also he claimed that just over 60 ballot boxes would have been counted today. We have not um, received the official count from the public relations officer from GCOM. So we can't say for sure how many ballot boxes, but it is being claimed by Mr. Nandala that it was 60 ballot boxes that were counted for today.